Welcome to the Asset Management Mastery Podcast. Your hosts, Gary Lipsky and Kyle Mitchell, have more than 50 years of combined experience in operations and management, and more than 25 years of real estate investing experience. This show focuses on educating syndicators and apartment owners on how to build systems and manage their properties more efficiently to become a best-in-class operator. 100% straight talk. Let's jump in. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Asset Management Mastery Podcast. I'm your co-host, Kyle Mitchell, also joined by Gary Lipsky. This segment is focused on educating operators, building better systems, and becoming a best-in-class operator. Also, be sure to check out our Facebook group, Asset Management Mastery. All right. So today, we're going to do something a little bit different. Uh, we want to take you behind the scenes to show you how we look at markets, opportunities, and executing a business plan. Um, we hope that this will help you in your journey to become a best-in-class operator. Um, we'll be doing this about every six weeks, and you know we obviously welcome your feedback. So if you like it, let us know. If you don't like it, let us know, uh, and we'll, we'll change it. Um, so let's jump in. Let's, uh, let's talk about our latest acquisition. Uh, this was in Tucson, a uh, market that, that, you, that Kyle turned me on to when we initially partnered up. And So tell the listeners why you like the Tucson market so much. Yeah, you know, typically people think Tucson's a very small market and it is smaller, but in the MSA still has a million people and it's growing rapidly, kind of like the Phoenix market. So we wanted to pair um, another market with Phoenix, a fast, high growing market like Phoenix, um, but we wanted to have two markets. And it was very convenient, the fact that it was in Arizona, still only an hour and 45 minutes away. Um, and a lot of the brokers overlap in that section too. But essentially, as investors, we want to increase deal flow. So adding that market really helped with that. But from a fundamentals perspective, Tucson has performed fantastic. I mean, from rent growth, number one in the country over the last several years, population growth, you know, people are moving in droves out of uh, places like California and Oregon into Arizona, but it's not just Phoenix, it's in Tucson as well. And, you know, the biggest driving factor for me is always job diversity. And if you look back in 2008, all of Arizona kind of struggled with that a lot. Um, they were heavily relying on construction jobs. Now you're seeing even tech jobs come into Phoenix and into Tucson. Um, and so job diversity is one thing that they've really done well over the last 12 years to position themselves for the go forward. And so I think they've got a ton of room left to grow. And there's also true value add in, in Tucson versus a lot of Phoenix. Now, that doesn't mean Phoenix doesn't have true value add, but a lot of that inventory has been picked over for the last couple of years, last 10 years. And so it's very hard to find a traditional value add product. In Tucson, there's a little bit more, although there is limited inventory there. All right. So you love, tu uh, sorry, you love Tucson. All right. But let's talk about the, our latest deal. You know, what were some of the key factors in wanting to, to purchase Bella Vista? Yeah, so Bella Vista was an interesting one. It was an on-market deal, which is typically one we don't love going after because the price gets driven up pretty quickly. But it did drop out of being on market because of a prepayment issue. And we were able to snap it up with no competition because we decided to pivot a little bit and be open to an assumption of a loan. So uh, the discount that we got with the purchase price of it um, was fantastic, number one. But also, you know, you and I have a background in operations and management, and that's one of our things that we look for in a new property is, hey, are there operational inefficiencies? I think a lot of people talk about, oh, I want to value add. I want to put, you know, five, 10, 15 grand a unit into it, upgrade the interiors, raise the rent 200 bucks, the typical value add play. And we're doing some of that at Bella Vista, but it's not our main um, kind of uh, business plan at that property. It's really because there was an operational inefficiency. We felt like the owners were very comfortable with the NOI they were getting. They weren't trying to push it. The property management company could be doing better. Um, and they were loading in a lot of Section 8 people, which a lot of people will think that's a red flag. We feel that's an opportunity uh, because they're capping their own rents. You know, Section 8 can only go so high. And so you can only push the rent so high. So these rents were so far under market as in as is condition. So it's really about getting the right player in there, uh, property manager and getting the right residents in there as well. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, you're, you're, you're implementing your business plan. You know, what are the, the key things you're, you're, you're focusing on in the first six months? 
Yeah, first six months is crucial. And as you know, you know, even the, the two months prior to close is where our first six months start. And we're talking to the property management company, we're making sure we have outlined in detail what our expectation is on timeline, what our expectation is on as far as upgrades, and getting quotes and all those bids. But we're also starting things like, you know, uh, changing the name if we're going to rebrand something. So it's really important for us to get out of the gate running. And if you wait until you close, you're going to you're going to come out of the gate, you know, slowly walking. If that you have to wait on a lot of things. So we try and get a, pretty far ahead of it. So we've owned the property at this point a couple months. So we're already four months into our execution of the business plan. But the things that we're trying to do is just make sure the residents know that we, you've got a new owner. We care about the property. We're going to make it better. We're here to resolve your issues, not make them worse. Um, clear communication and expectations uh, from that point of view. And then also from our investors' point of view, we're trying to update our investors on everything going on, how we're executing um, in our first couple months with the business plan, and also trying to get them kind of um, situated and understand how we communicate and things like that. So it's, it's kind of wrangling everyone together. Um, and making sure everything is going according to plan. Yeah, a lot of moving pieces. You mentioned the business plan uh, a little bit. So, you know, talk about some of the savings that you're trying to to implement uh, over the first, you know, six months, a year, two years. Yeah. So a lot of the operational inefficiencies for this property really is on the expense side of it. Um, whether it be payroll, because they had too many people with the previous property management company, way too many people on site. Um, and this happens a lot when, you know, ownership doesn't pay that close attention. And um, they say they need something that they really don't. And so that's one of the areas we're saving. Utilities is another one. Uh, you can look at this as a utility savings or a increase in income, but really pushing the rubs out there. Um, we are now moving to a, a company called Conservice, which is a third party. And typically they can recapture about 90 to 95% of the total utility costs for master meter properties. So that's something that we're looking into. And that was not originally part of the plan. We were just going to increase the rubs. Um, but for a master meter property, it, you know, you can really push the rubs a lot higher than you can for, for individually metered. So that's an area where we're going to save for sure. Um, and then just, uh, renegotiating our contracts. I think that's a big one too. I think year over year, we renegotiate our contracts and a lot of people will just roll it over, roll it over and allow that steady four or 5% increase to happen. But we're re renegotiating a lot of the contracts that people are paying a little bit more than uh, the people before were paying a little bit more than we're going to be paying now. And, and that's been helpful to be able to re reduce expenses immediately. And then the last thing that we're doing is just fixing some deferred maintenance. This is the biggest one, actually, because deferred maintenance hits your day to day line items every single day. And as soon as you can get those items fixed, they're going to come off your your PL and that's going to increase NOI immediately. So really focus on a lot of deferred maintenance immediately. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we talked about uh, some of those savings and I think we, we definitely underwrite differently than, than other people. How explain to the listeners, how we implement those, those savings over, over time in our, in our pro forma. Yeah. I, I think when you first take over a property, you want to get everything going very quickly, but you do have to everything takes way longer than it should. Everything takes longer than planned. So, you know, we plan things out over the stabilization, stabilization period, which is anywhere from 12 months to, to 24 months, depending on the size of the, of the property. But you want to make sure you're doing them in, in certain phases and make sure you think about the whole thing through, for example, like we're redoing the lines at, um, the lines for the chiller boiler at Bella Vista, um, and we're also doing landscaping work. Well, if you did the landscaping work first, you'd have to tear up some of that landscaping work to do the pipes. And so that's where you can kind of put the cart ahead of the horse. And so you've got to plan all these things out. So, you know, they take a little bit of, of time and planning, but essentially, you know, it's going to happen over a, a 12 to 18 month period um, and slowly, you know, lower those expenses over time. And of course, not everything goes smoothly. So why don't we share with the listeners some of the challenges that we face and, and how to overcome at the property? Yeah, I think uh, two challenges that come to mind are changing the name, which for some reason in Tucson is not easy. And so we've got we've gotten rejected for our name change twice now, and we're going back to the well. And there's no one that has this name. It's not a big deal, but 
they need certain paperwork. We started this process, I think, two months before we closed because we knew on our last property uh, this was going to be an issue. But the reason why we're changing the name is because the current name has a little bit of a bad image and has some bad reviews. So we want to rebrand it to get a more positive image and let everyone know, hey, we're changing things here, which is important, not just for the re current or re new residents coming in, but for the current residents. Um, and then the other thing was, you know, you have to train your your residents when uh, they're making payments. And if you're too soft on collection of payments, then they can take advantage of you. And so one of the challenges that we're facing is that residents have been told it's okay to pay before the end of the month. And so typically, you know, you start late charges after the fifth of the month and then apply and then apply rate, late changes. And you want to collect as much as your income, you know, on day one and previous property management was allowing them to pay up until the 28th, 29th and 30th. So it's retraining those, those residents, which, you know, it's not a huge challenge, but it is one of those things that uh, will take a couple months to get them used to it. Uh, but when you do those types of things, it's really sensitive to allow a little bit of a grace period, let them know you're there to work with them. You don't want massive turnover, but also, um, you know, setting expectations, but then on the other side, setting expectations for yourself. And that's us improving the property and improving things like service calls and, and getting to items quicker. When they see that, they're going to be a little bit more willing to work with you. Yeah. And we've been seeing great results already so far, which is, which is cool. All right. So lastly, as you know, we ask all of our guests, and since you're a guest today, we're going to ask you, what is your asset management superpower? Gary, you can answer this one for me probably, but I, I would say my asset management superpower is attention to detail. I'm a very detail oriented person and I like to catch the smallest stuff. And, you know, I think that helps us in, in our overall um, business plan execution, the small things do matter and it's about doing them consistently over time. And so, you know, that's kind of where my strength lies. I totally agree. Absolutely. Perfect. All right. Well, if you do like this episode and this type of format, please let us know. Give us feedback because we'd like to do this every six weeks and update you on things that we're going through from an asset management perspective, right? Um, as we execute our business plan, what are our, some of our successes, but also some of our challenges so everyone can kind of learn, you know, the process of what we go through for asset management side and, and hopefully can learn things to avoid um, from your side when you are managing your assets as well. So um, if you do like this episode, please give us a like, subscribe, subscribe and review so we can continue to grow the podcast. And we'll talk to everyone next week. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed the show, please go to iTunes and leave a rating and written review to help us grow and reach more listeners. You can also go to the Asset Management Mastery Group on Facebook so you can reach Kyle and Gary and ask your questions that you want them to answer on the show. Subscribe too so you can get the latest episodes. Lastly, to stay updated, go to assetmanagementmastery.com and sign up for the newsletter. If you're interested in partnering with Gary and Kyle, sign up on the contact page so you can talk to them directly. Thanks again for joining us. Be sure to tune in again next week for another episode.